Let's talk about one of the most annoying bugs you can get on your house plants. So this is how to get rid of fungus gnats. And I say annoying because fungus gnats don't really do a whole lot of damage to your plants, but they sure do a lot of damage to your mental health and sanity in your house. Because once you have an infestation of fungus gnats in your house, they're just kind of everywhere all the time around your face and stuff. And it just makes you crazy. Now, before we get too deep into this, there's actually three different types of tiny little flying insects that you might find in your home. So the one we'll talk about today are the fungus gnats, which are not to be confused with fruit flies, which is a completely different type of problem, or drain flies, which are a different type of bug with a different set of circumstances for how they get in your house. But all three of those will buzz around your face and make you crazy, but we're focusing on fungus gnats today, which live in the soil of your plants. At least that's where they start off. So similar to butterflies, fungus gnats have a different larval form versus the adult form. And the larvae don't have wings, but instead of caterpillars, these are little worm-like larvae that live down in the soil. And yeah, they're pretty gross looking. And then they pupate and then they turn into those adult fungus gnats, which then buzz around all over your house and look for suitable new environments to lay more eggs. So how do we break that cycle and get rid of these bugs once and for all. Well, one thing that all fungus gnat infections have in common is moisture. Fungus gnats cannot survive in dry soil, and so plants that are overwatered or watered constantly, where the soil is just always kind of soggy and wet, are going to have more issues with fungus gnats versus a plant that is allowed to dry down or dry at least most of the way before watering again. So yeah, the larvae love that wet soil because fungus will grow more quickly in wet soil and that's the food source and that's why they're called fungus gnats because the larvae feed on fungus. So step one is to cut back on the watering as much as you can. A lot of people tend to love their plants to death because they just want to water them and water them but a lot of house plants can stand for going longer periods in between watering and that'll help you to reduce the amount of gnats. Now there are a couple of products you can use that will help kill those larvae as well. The most natural and safe one would be something called mosquito bits. So these here are similar to the mosquito dunks that you can throw for mosquito larvae in water, but these will work for house plants and fungus gnat larvae as well. So you can take some of these bits, soak them in water for about 30 minutes, and then water your plants with this. What the product is, is called Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis, and it is a beneficial bacteria that will target just the larval form of these insects and it won't hurt anything else like people or pets. Another thing that you may consider using would be a systemic insecticide granule. Now, the reason why you would use this versus the mosquito bits is this is going to target a wider range of insects, including things like mealybugs and aphids or even thrips. So this is a really handy product to have for your house plants as well, because it's going to be kind of a broad spectrum insecticide. Now, another method you can do without using any type of chemicals is the sand method. So you actually just take sand, just like play sand, and put a nice layer of sand over the top of your soil. This isn't going to hurt the plant at all, but it seems to do a really good job of slowing down the fungus gnats. And let me explain why. So how does having some sand on top of the soil help you with fungus gnats? You see, fungus gnats have to access the soil to go lay their eggs. And sand is actually really quite dense and hard for them to dig through. And it's also coarse on a microscopic level. So sand might feel nice and smooth to you, but if you were to zoom in on it, it actually has sharp corners that are going to hurt the fungus gnats as they try to access your soil. And so it just makes it a lot harder for them to get in here and lay eggs. However, this is not foolproof because this isn't the only way to access the soil for those fungus gnats. There are also drain holes down here that those sneaky little buggers can get into to access your soil. I'll mention that there are yellow sticky cards and electronic traps and things like that that you can put out that would capture adults, but those are not attacking the root of the problem, which would be the larvae and the breeding form of the plants. So use those if you want to, but they may not solve your issues. Yeah, use the techniques in this video, share it with your friends that may be struggling with this too, and get back your sanity from those pesky fungus gnats.